In celebration of Black History Month, we um, were very moved by a spoken piece, and so we have invited Linda Jones to come up and share that piece with our community. Good, still morning, good morning. <laughs> this piece I have to offer is called Warrior Spirit. My man-child is a warrior spirit whose first act of resistance was to just be still. He never consulted me about it. The choice was his alone. But as a result of his choice not to make a physical appearance, worry is a foreign concept for this mother of a black son. For 30 years and counting, I never had to worry about my son leaving the house and never coming back. I never had to worry about receiving that dreaded knock at the door or that late night phone call delivering news that would shatter. I don't know what it's like worrying about my son risking his life going out to do those simple things like walking with the cool breeze in his stride or talking with confidence, cadence, and pride, or running because he wants to, or standing because he can, like a warrior. He knew before I even had a clue, and in his knowing, he chose to just pass through, but not into this life. My son knew that in his stillness, his warrior spirit would rise intact, untouched, and untainted by those who would be extremely and supremely delusional. And in his stillness, my warrior spirit son would defy the odds of his survival and continue to exist without interruption. And so it is. Yeah, that, thank you for such um, a moving piece, Linda. And um, wow, you know, our February theme is um, awakening to our spiritual magnificence. And our annual theme is a world that works for everyone. And a world that works for everyone is one in which we embrace the perspectives, the, the experiences, the cultures, the everything. Um, and see and expand in those different perspectives. I remember vividly one evening here in this community where I was sitting in a circle of mothers, African-American mothers from our own community, and they described what she wrote about. Like, they have sons. And so, it's moving that we get to express and we make space for and we make room for these creative expressions because today's message is really about we're one but we're not the same and that's that's what I'm here to to share and 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 unpack shall we say that we're one and not the same and more and I found out yesterday on a call for Centers for Spiritual Living that we actually have over 120 communities participating in this, so I guess some more have jumped on board and didn't want to not take up this annual theme of a world that works for everyone. So we have, you know, literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people holding this vision every single day of this year, a world that works for everyone. <laughs> and what we're all talking about, the communities that decided to take that up, with the, the grounding um, message is that it's from what we believe. And so today we're bringing in this, we believe in the incarnation of the spirit in everyone and that all people 
are incarnations of the one spirit. So it's like, all right, the question can be, why do we celebrate diversity when we're all one? You know, um, it's a most significant and interesting question in today's age that why do we actually honor and celebrate diversity here at CSL Dallas, perhaps? Because our philosophy teaches that the multiplicity of the individuality is important to the one. That's what we teach, that it's this multiplicity in the individuality of the one, and I'll be speaking on that. So that's why we have um, uh, uh, now about to be a Spanish-speaking circle. We have an LGBTQIA circle. We're celebrating Black History Month, and we have the diversity initiative here at CSL Dallas. Because honestly, philosophically, if we think about it, this is sort of a new idea. If we look at where we've sort of come from in humanity, we look, we look at, we've moved from this place, I trust, we've moved from this place of we're different. We're different. And, you know, you're not like me, and, and so I better stay away. You know, I, I, I might be afraid of you, or I'll do whatever I can to keep you at a distance from me. So we've sort of come from there, and we've started to embrace this, especially a new thought. And in, in many religions, we've embraced, well, we're all one. I don't see any differences. I don't see color. I don't see these things, because we're all one. Okay, that's an evolution, and we've moved sort of into that, and we're sort of hovering in that. But actually, um, where we're headed is that as humanity is spiraling up, it leads us to the understanding that unity does not mean uniformity. And Ernest Holmes speaks about this a lot, that unity does not mean uniformity, therefore we make space for and celebrate the incredibly multiplicity of the one in this community, which is really awesome. Here's the thing, this one infinite reality, the thing itself, God, spirit, whatever we choose to call it, this universal life is from which it is that thing from which all creation springs, okay? So the universal life moves from the level of the macrocosm. It's moving from the level of the macrocosm, and it's moving from the generic life. This is the paradox. It's moving from the generic life that happens to show up from the atom to the trees to the stars to the galaxy. But that's the macrocosm, right? And evolution has been on this trajectory of the universal life that is seeking more and more awareness and self-consciousness. That's why we're here. This universal life is individualized, and that is the key word for today. It is individualized in all things and becomes self-aware of it, the macro, the universal life, of it, individual individualization where in the human being that's where it gets to understand its individualization in each of us so if we take if we take very seriously and we do take very seriously this idea that we are made in the image and likeness of god right it's not one exception we are made in the image and likeness of God, and so therefore we're partaking in the divine nature. And as Jesus stated, when you see me, you see the Father. That's what he was saying. So when you look at any person, any person, you're looking at the divine made manifest. So I invite you to turn and look at a person on your left and the right, and realize that this is the divine made manifest. Okay, y'all will get all warm and fuzzy in half a second, so I'm going to reel it back in. So, in the science of mind, we embrace the understanding that God, spirit, life, whatever we choose to call it, has taken on this unique and individualized form in and as each of us. The infinite one, known by many names, has become, it's become that which we are. We ain't becoming it. It has become that which we are. 
And so rather than thinking of ourselves as two things, human and divine, we realize that we are the thing itself right here on earth. Now, there are various aspects of our being that sort of come into play in our own experiences and our own awarenesses and our own expressions. So what we, we do is we move from, I trust, we move from this realization that we're not merely human beings having a human experience on earth, right? We move to this place where we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But now I'm going to invite you to really experience and to understand that we're actually, ultimately, though, spiritual beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience. And yes, if your life is anything like mine sometimes, it don't feel like I'm a spiritual being sometimes. And it doesn't feel, feel like I'm having a spiritual experience sometimes, right? But there's only one thing going on. That's God, spirit, life, right? So I'm going to invite you this is participatory. I'm going to invite you to stand and have just a little space from your neighbor. Just stand if you're able and you're willing. So just, you know, we'll work with it. The great news is, is you're not like first service. You know, they got a lot of expansion. So now, I am not going to deny nor even pretend that I don't know what this day is. So I appreciate that y'all are here before the big game. So... <laughs> We might as well do a warm-up. You ready? Touchdown! Touchdown! Oh, let's do that again. Touchdown! Touchdown! Good. But take a look at our teaching symbol, right? There's this nice big V up there. Well, yes, that's another talk. <laughs> Obviously, you were here. <laughs> that's good. So, our teaching symbol, we have this huge V, right? So... I'm going to invite you to become it. Become the V. So as long as you can, hold your arms up in this V and not whack your neighbor. <laughs> All right. And then I want you to just sort of feel thyself for this experience. So now I invite you to look up at the ceiling. And then I invite you to look through the ceiling. Right? to look beyond this building. And I invite you to look beyond Dallas and continue to go beyond and beyond until you're into the infinite cosmos and the diverse reality that stands behind it and became it, this form. You're there. You're it. And I, get, I invite you to embrace that this is reality. And now when you're ready, I invite you to bring all of that, all of that down literally with your arms and bring it into yourself. I have some things so I can't do it, but bring it into your chest, right? This, bring it in this infinite reality of spirit right down in the center of your body and your being. Just feel that. Yeah. This is what we teach, that that which God is has taken on form. And it's embodied and it's incarnated as that which you are. Okay, you may be seated. So our teachings, including that teaching symbol, is that we actually have a body, that we actually have a subjective life, it's a mental part, and that we actually are spirit. So spirit, soul, body represents a point dare I say, an exclamation point, where individuality is accentuated in universality. 
And it takes me a little bit to get my mind and my heart and my soul around this. So this universal mind is individualized, but it is never, never individual. This mind, this one mind, this universal life, will never be anything less than universal. It'll never be individual. But it will be and is individualized. And, and so the message is there is a great difference between individualized and individual. I love how Ernest Holmes describes it in many of his quotes. It's like the wave in the ocean will never be a wave by itself. You cannot pluck a wave out of the ocean. It's impossible. It will be the ocean as a wave. We are waves in this ocean. Our being is merely a point where the infinite being comes into self-expression and self-experience. Think about that, how magnificent that is. And again, it's like a wave on the ocean. And there's no doubt some cosmic urge urging this wave along. He, Ernest Holmes talks about that each individual, however, is a unique variation in the universe. No two people are alike. Not one. And yet, we are all rooted in that which is identical. No two people are alike. No, they use this. No two people are alike. Yet, what we're rooted in is so identical. Each incarnation is part of the infinite number of incarnations, and each one, each one, each one is needed to express the infinite universal reality so it has its individual experiences. It needs us. Every incarnation is therefore vital and necessary to the whole. The whole would not be the same without Iva and Richard and Steve and Raven. It would not be the same whole. So Ernest Holmes clearly states on multiple occasions, again, unity does not mean uniformity. Now, it wasn't too long ago that I went to one of my favorite places in Dallas, the Dallas Arboretum. I love to go. I have a little, you know, uh, what is it, membership. I go all the time. And it was when they brought the pumpkins out, so it was around Halloween, right? And I just was stunned as I was walking along, and I saw this little patch of flowers. I mean, really, it was a little patch. And I looked down, and I went, look at how all these things are showing up differently. So much so that I took these pictures knowing I'd use it in a talk one day. <laughs> now these are black-eyed Susans. If anybody happens to be or know a Bronco fan, they're also called Denver Daisies. <laughs> I had to throw it in again. But in this little patch, look, that was only five. Look how each of these supposedly same things showed up. The flowers, are, the petals are different. The, how they, the colors and how those colors express. I, I, I was just like, oh my gosh, it's right here in the daisies. Okay, y'all, you know, <laughs> things get me sometimes. Ernest Holmes says, unity and uniformity are not the same thing. No two blades of grass are alike. Just think about your lawn if you have grass. 
how many blades of grass there are, or at the Dallas Arboretum for that matter, and, and not a one is the same. So what does it mean spiritually? It means that incarnated within each of us is not only a divine spark, got that, not only an incarnation of the living spirit of the cosmos, but a unique representation of the cosmic whole. So here are some questions to begin to ponder for yourself. Are you willing to embrace your unique presentation of the cosmic whole? Are you willing to express your own uniqueness? I used to curb my enthusiasm. Are you willing to express your uniqueness, right? Do you actually embrace your own individualized expression? your own perfect wave. So it's up to each of us to value ourselves as meaningful and precious to the whole. That's where we begin. To begin to know that I am precious. My own individualized expression to the whole. Now, Ernest Holmes continues and says, life has set the stamp of individuality on you. You are different from any other person who ever lived and any other person who ever shall live. You are the individualized center in the consciousness of God. You are an individualized activity in the action of God. There's never been one like you. There never will be again, ever. You are an original masterpiece, one of a kind. And it got me thinking, like, how in other forms do we place value on something like that? I actually got so curious, I went out to the Internet. Our friend Google, you know, my friend is Google. And I was wondering, okay, pieces of original artwork, masterpieces, what's the value placed on some of these? And I, I went and I sort of saw the top ten and I pulled three out in the top five. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at this. Look how we value. This is right now the number one most expensive last sale of a piece of original artwork artwork by Paul Gauguin. It's called Will You Marry Me? It sold for $300 million. We take great value in original masterpieces of creative expressions. Now, I have something for hopefully everybody. This is by Paul Cezanne, the card players. It sold for $250 million. Any Jackson Pollock fans? Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> this one's called November 5th, 1948. I wonder when he did it. It sold for $165 million. So, you know, think of this. Do we embrace the masterpiece that we each are, that you are? You embrace your unique, individualized expression of this cosmic, universal whole. Well, I want to bring this back because in this quote, what I really like also is when we embrace that and know our own uniqueness and our own individualized expression that only life itself can express and have fun as us through it, each of us. It also says, he also says, um, yes, you're an individualized center in the consciousness, the consciousness of God, and you are an individualized activity in the 
action of God. Now that got me thinking too. Sometimes I'm not really doing real well being the action of God. How do we take up the action of God? God in action. Do we make space within our own selves to embrace or tolerate or accept and celebrate all the other individualized centers around us? If we are to know God, we must penetrate deeply into our own nature, for here alone we can find God. If we would reveal God to our brothers and sisters, expressing their individuality, we must do so by acting God-like. And so it's this call to embrace our own individuality and to embrace, because there's a lot of individuality out there, and it shows up in a lot of ways. It shows up in a lot of different cultures, in a lot of different races, in a lot of different countries, in a lot of different ages, in a lot of different political um, stances, in a lot of religions. There's a lot of the blades of grass individualized. And how do we act as the action of God? I thought about this, like the ocean, I imagine, does not deny any wave. Doesn't reject it, doesn't hate it, doesn't judge it, doesn't say that wave is too small and that wave is too big. I imagine the ocean never rejects a wave. It just lets the wave be the wave and be the wave and be the wave. So I'm going to ask you one more time to stand up if you would. Be so kind if you're able and willing. And add one more layer to this. Okay. We won't do touchdown again. I want to ask you to raise your arms again in the V. You felt it, you know it, the universal life, the cosmos, all that is, the whole of the whole of the whole. And then bring it into you, for you are this gorgeous, individualized expression of it. Bring it into yourself. And now I ask you to lower your hands down into a V. And are we willing to be open and be the action of God? God in action. For we believe in the incarnation of spirit in everyone. And that all people are incarnations of the one spirit. And God has taken form and incarnated in that which we are. And we are each a unique variation in the universal. And so here's my prayer for us standing and not standing and listening and seeing today. And for everyone we know and we don't know for those whom we haven't met and will never meet these gorgeous beautiful waves that we may each value ourselves as meaningful and precious to the whole we are valuable we are precious to the whole may we each see the same divine reality in presence each and every person, even when sometimes it's challenging to do so. Perhaps we open our arms and stand in this V within our own self, either literally or figuratively, and just open a little bit more to embrace the presence in each and every one of us. And may we each be the action of God from that place. For we are the center. We are where the whole takes 
form. We are spiritual beings having a spiritual experience. And we're one of a kind. And we're precious just as we are. And it doesn't get any better than that. And so it is. You may be seated.